In this DSP morsel, I'm going to give you an introduction to Slifer, design a simple low-pass filter, subject it to Kaiser windowing, and then measure the quality of the final result. I'll fold away this PowerPoint slide, we don't need that label anymore. Go to MATLAB command window, type Slifer here to invoke the tool. Thereafter, I don't need to pay any particular attention to MATLAB for this particular exercise. I'll move my window around a little bit. Have a look at the layout here. We've got D from DC to Nyquist frequency running along this axis here. And I'm going to change that sampling frequency situation from the normalized case to 8 kilohertz just to recalibrate things and you see the changed situation here. You'll also notice that there's some little purple squares here which indicate the frequency grid points of the frequency sampling design technique which is one of the venerable and very very powerful design techniques available to you. These are spaced by 8,000 divided by 21. Well 21 because 21 coefficients have been set up here in this upper right hand corner of the GUI and those coefficients are being seen right here at the moment in this strip across here in this plot in this particular axis window right here. Other things visible uh, over here in the Cameo which we have lots of things we can look at we won't do much of that in this particular exercise and for that matter pole zero plot showing the layout of the zeros in the Z plane. I'm going to put a grid on this. I'll start by having the grid which lines up with those little purple squares and you notice they line up then with uh, these circles which are lying on the yellow curve. Now this yellow curve is trying to match the red curve. This red one is the target profile. It can be moved and, and changed here with the different cutoff frequencies and different rate of which it rolls down. And of course each time I do this I get a new set of coefficients resulting from the inverse DFT of these samples which are shown on the grid on the yellow curve and also those are lying on the red curve so that they match although I could move them off of that curve to different altitudes and this is the essence of the frequency sampling design technique is that I actually have control of these 21 points because I've got 21 coefficients I've got the same number in the frequency domain and these are constraint points which the gain is absolutely required to go through those points I'm going to try to get myself a low pass filter which cuts off at 2 kilohertz so I'm down on the lower edit box and I type 2000 precisely in here and I see a brick wall red target profile now and of course the filter is not able to follow that and we got these overshoots. These overshoots are related to the idea of the Gibbs phenomenon and if I want to see that in dB terms rather than the display I've got here which is showing some magnitude or you could say zero phase gain amplitude there are various other names for this in the DSP literature it's magnitude for us we can switch to dB gain and we see that for this particular filter we've got a quite a deep scale here going down to minus 300 that's not too useful in this case so I'll undo the, the auto scale and put perhaps minus 100 dB into that edit box and so it's a bit more useful here. I'm also going to try to have more coefficients. I'll go for 101 so I'm changing the end coefs up here in the upper right hand corner of the GUI and you see that now the grid points have become much more closely spaced. They're now 8000 divided by 101 and in fact this is getting to get a bit boring, this is a bit uh, dense this here. I'll take the grid off so it's not quite so, so dense and I can see what's going on a little bit better. I see this Gibbs phenomenon situation here. I can measure things by doing a right click. Most things in Slifer are done by left mouse button click. But I'm doing a right button click here to get this measurement and I see that that side lobe level is around about 17, almost 18 uh, dBs. 
down here, not very good. I would like to have a much deeper and lower side lobe level, generally speaking, than that. So I'll delete that measurement block and ask, what can I do? Well, one thing I could do, of course, is to try to throw still more coefficients at it. Let me go with 201, so I'm making a change up here. And you see, of course, that the ripple structure is finer and faster, but we've still got this quite annoyingly high side lobe level. Among the many things we could attempt to do is to make use of windowing. Well, I'll do that. I'll go back to the 101 coefficient situation. That's quite sufficient here. And I'll make use of Kaiser windowing. Well, Kaiser windowing is geared up uh, in, in particular for a different design technique from frequency sampling. It's, there are all sorts of calibrated relationships uh, available and they don't actually make use of frequency sampling. Of course the windowing will do its powerful effect but we just won't be very accurate with it unless we change our design technique. Well tucked away under this operations menu item up here, I go all the way to the bottom of it, I can actually do my design differently from frequency sampling. I have two other possibilities. One is least squared or sometimes called impulse invariant. When I clicked it you noticed they did actually change the amount of the side lobe structure, change the coefficient arrangement and so forth, but still annoyingly high. I'd like to make use of Kaiser windowing now that I've got the right design technique in place to use it with its published sort of goodness characteristics and go up here under the setup which is the, at the top of the GUI here and allows me to come down to window options Kaiser desired side lobe and choose the side lobe level that I'd like to go down to. This will still be approximate because as you may realize windowing is a slapdash sort of operation but it's uh, certainly a simple operation. So m let me go and change this coefficient, this depth figure here to, I don't know, uh, 70 dB perhaps. Change this and now actually apply the windowing and see what we get. So this will actually multiply these coefficients up here and we see what comes out. Well here it is down here pretty deep and we could of course measure it as we did before by a little measurement box but perhaps this is the time now to get a full story about these coefficients. There are a couple of ways we can get this story. One is to make use of a tool here called CPIG which pops up and gives us lots of credentials about the filter. This is very handy. Uh, it shows us impulse response. It shows us a variety of things. It can show us uh, unwrapped phase. It can show us group delay. It can show us phase delay. Lots of things here. And furthermore, give us this in numerical form. All sorts of things like where the zeros are, how much DC gain we've got, and so on. All of these can be helpful in terms of archiving the qualities of this filter. But I'd like to be really specific about its goodness insofar as a low pass filter goes. And so I'm going to view the so-called quality measure. I'm up here again at the top of the GUI and now up will come yet another little utility which as we see here it's come up on a linear scale. Let me take it onto DB and let me run it uh, down deep to I don't know minus 90 DB or something and we can see what's happened here. What's happened is that we've drawn a template around the filter and we're able to measure where that band edge is and sure enough it's quite close to the minus 70 dB or the 70 dB attenuation point which we had required of Kaiser windowing. We have uh, other measures which are important. Here for example we can see that this transition area has been measured to be 345 Hertz. We can actually measure it although we might want to zoom in on that by coming in here to minus 1 dB perhaps that's not even enough. Point 0.1 and we're up high up here so maybe we should go down to plus point 0.1 and I'm beginning to home in and be able to see the 
passband ripple. These are the three important things which are measured already numerically for me here. This is the passband situation, the transition across from passband to stop band, and then the stop band parameters out here. Let me just go a little bit further here. Come in 0.01 and a 0.01 on the top side, and now I can see the passband ripple. This then gives us the ability to archive this filter, save its coefficients in some sort of way. Various ways to do this by going back to the slifer window and perhaps exporting these to some place like, for example, the workspace or to some other tool which we have available. But one way or another, we've now got our coefficients. We brought this side lobe level down and this completes this particular task.